Okay, um, Adolfo is going to go over VEX and how you would show, um, you know, maybe a vulnerability is affected, and then maybe you do more research and you realize it's not affected. He's going to cover how you would show those um, changing statuses of relationships. Thanks. All right. Yeah. So let's um, go a little bit on on, on to VEX. So for those who are not familiar, VEX which stands for Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange, is a way of conveying the actual impact that a vulnerability has on a given piece of software. Because once, uh, as we are seeing s yes, information starting to increase and flow even more, so do the number of false positives and other uh, information um, uh, detailing, uh, like starting to light up security dashboards across, right? Because you have more visibility into your supply chain and uh, those components st start to show up. Especially, the, and this is especially true for, uh, because sometimes when you ship software, uh, due to, for example, things like base images who include software that you don't really need, they start to light up uh, uh, and flag vulnerabilities that may not necessarily impact your piece of software. Um, so to okay, so to understand this, I want to give like a short example. Um, so the first thing I want to uh, point out is, if you saw in Rosa's previous examples, um, the security profile is about conveying the disclosure of security information. So um, you you have to think about uh, the information flowing regarding to security as uh, flowing different cadences. So the first one is you have the SBOM, which is supposed to be static, because once you publish a piece of software, it's supposed to never change, right? Because if you issue a new piece of software, it's, uh, it needs a new SBOM because it's a different thing. And then on top of that, you have the security information. You have a vulnerability, and that when that's released, it has a set cadence. It should also not change. But the assessments of those uh, of those vulnerabilities start to change. Um, the more information gets known, more people are looking at it, are emit like issuing opinions of that vulnerability, and then and it starts to change. And the same is true for uh, the impact uh, of the vulnerability with a given uh, piece of software. So I'm going to retake the um, example of uh, Bob's browser. Uh, I think. I'm, a subset of that by centering out on the on Bob's browser. So Bob's browser contains a version of Carl's compression engine. So in this um, in this case, what's going to happen is that someone is going to find a CVE that affects that it's contained in Carl's compression engine. So if Carl's compression engine has that CVE, that means that at some point Bob's browser is going to start be, to get flagged as vulnerable. So the first thing that's going to happen, and, and this, uh, the VEX author, which in this case, uh, you should have like a, an, an authoritative uh, source of um, VEX information, is going to be Bob, right? Because if you think about it, if you're running Bob's software, then you can pretty much give him uh, you're already trusting him of understanding what he's shipping, and he may understand uh, the impact that this CV has on his browser, which came through this dependency here. So the first thing that a VEX author might do is issue an un under investigation um, an under investigation me message. In VEX, um, it's uh, the idea of VEX is people start sending down the wire messages of the known impact that vulnerability has on software. And if you think about SPDX, the great thing about SPDX is that it has all of these wonderful sets of relationships that let you communicate how this, this, all of these pieces relate to each other. So what we did in the security profile is um, overload, I don't know if that's the right word, but supercharge might be better, those relationships. Uh, with more information to convey the VEX statuses, just as we did with the security assessments. So once uh, the CVE hits and it gets published, uh, Bob starts looking into it, and the first thing that he should do is inform people that, okay, I'm looking at this vulnerability and how it affects my software. And then after that, 
he may found uh, so the under investigation relationship has a sub, like an, a field where it lets you point. I'm looking at this CV in my browser, but assessed like look, looking at it through the uh, because I know it's contained in Carl's compression engine v31. And then the next one is Bob will determine. Okay, I'm affected. He sends the affected message on the wire, and people can react to it. So you can enact policy because all of this is machine readable. So if your idea is okay, I should patch, I should like take care, like take care of it in my own hands. This is the, the your your starting message that you should start acting. Or the next one is okay. Let, let's say that Bob goes to Carol and says, Carol, can you patch the vulnerability? And Carol may say, Well, I'm the lonely maintainer in Nebraska. I cannot do that just now. So Bob may issue, like, take action and fix it and by himself. So he releases uh, B221 with a mitigation for that, uh, for the CV containing Carl, in Carol's compression engine. But if you think about it, and he's still shipping this as a vulnerability, as a, as a component, it may still show up in the scanners because it's still contained in there. Even though he, Bob has mitigated it in his piece of software, the 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 CV is still contained in his software. So what Bob issues is a new message that say, that says, even though I'm I'm shipping you Carl's compression engine with which is affected in a CV, I have mitigated it, and in the uh, the it's not a, like the security document in SPDX. I'm marking it as not affected, and so this is the the way of that VEX conveys messages down the, down the wire. And so VEX is defined by a working group uh, organized by CISA from the US. And this means that now SPDX joins a number of VEX implementations. So the working group defines VEX as a, an idea, as a spec of specs. And SPDX now joins uh, OpenVEX, CISA, and Cyclone DX as VEX implementations. And the, as, as we are just releasing it, um, the final VEX specification or, or document defining what the minimal requirements for VEX was released in January. SPDX um, joins OpenVEX in being the only two uh, fully compliant uh, implementations of, uh, of, of VEX. Uh, so the other two implementations, you can go from there to VEX, but not the other way around because you lose information which is critical for a proper functioning uh, VEX implementation. Um, so that's uh, that's the base of it. So, and this is a one. And okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Karen. And, oh, yeah. So, so this Move is the two. <laughs> this is the laser. And this is the pointer. And this moves the yeah. control schema relies on um, CVE reporting, right? But there are some time um, some defects in the software. How do you intend to use VEX so you can communicate some unpatched software? Um, I'm thinking more on, not from CI, but more on a availability perspective, like you know, buffer overflow, et cetera, that a software developer can include. Have you guys thought about that? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed half of the question. OK, the question is, um, this whole schema relies on CVE reporting, so you can include CVE. Are there a, an option where software developer can include some software defects that can be relayed to end user using VEX? It, it can extend beyond CVEs. It's been designed to work with other bug systems that are out there. So as long as you've got, that's why we, that's why we call the group defects as opposed to vulnerabilities, because there are defects out there that we need to report in on. and so. This is a mechanism that should extend there, but if it doesn't, we want to know this right now. This is why we're bringing this stuff forward. Yeah, and the other thing is, uh, VEX is not based around a software version; it's based around the product, and so it has this like level notion around product. So, uh, product can be an SPDX package, but also a bigger software package, and um, and it also has a vulnerability like just 
plain vulnerability. It doesn't, it's not tied to a CVE. It can also, I think if we, if I remember correctly, the definition that we added uh, to the vulnerability is any vulnerability that can be tracked that is registered in a tracking system. So if you have like an in-house tracking system, it can point to that. Like you can, if it, if it has a reference, you can uh, relate to it. That's where you can use the security external identifiers to say that you know I am the agency that's who assigned this ID for this defect, and then you can also use the external um, references to point to you know information about that defect. Thanks. It's a more generic question to all the presenters. Can you please upload your presentations to the schedule? Thanks. Thanks. Can you go back to the slide with uh, Bob and Carol for a second? I'm trying to get uh, my understanding of the document flow uh, improved. That's, that's the one. So today, if I look at a 2.3 implementation, I create an SBOM. I have the description of what's in that particular application. So I've got Bob's SBOM includes Carol. I understand that I've got one document that was created. With VEX, am I effectively having a series of SPDX documents that are going to be part of the flow? And if so, what out of the original SBOM contents are part of that flow? So in other words, am I overloading a system that is just starting to figure out what SBOMs are all about with this additional data set that now needs additional mapping. So I'm just trying to get that clear in my head. Thanks. No, ideally, you could issue just the, the uh, document with the, so VEX and SPDX is a relationship. So you could issue just a document with, a, with the reference for the vulnerability and the reference for the product. And just uh, the, even the subcomponent, is, it's just the identifier. So we only need those three in, in, the, in the document. So you start shipping those. So then I have a, an SBOM document itself that represents whatever was shipped, so Bob's 2.2. And now I'm going to have a number of relationship documents that will refer back to that original SPDX document. Exactly, which should be remain static because it's the same piece of software. OK, and then when Bob creates 2.2.1, uh, sorry, sorry, what? <laughs> so, so then when Bob creates 2.2.1, well, there might be a component change if he uh, did patch Carol's engine, or maybe there was something else that came along for the ride as part of the mitigation effort. But theoretically, that SBOM is close enough, but it's still a mapping from that point Exactly. Forward. I mean, in, okay. in, in that case, it's a new SBOM because it's a new piece of software. Right, right, right. So it's an additional. But yeah, like Rose said, it. Uh, Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that you can have multiple relationships and multi multiple vulnerability elements in one, you know, security profile SBOM. So okay. you're, you don't have to create a new, quote unquote, document for each relationship, security relationship, or each vulnerability. So that then allows me potentially, question, uh, to create uh, a vulnerability mapping back to a previously shipped yes. piece of software that is using an older version of SPDX. Oh. Yeah, I don't. Like mapping to another. Yeah, to a, yeah. to yeah. SPDX 2.3? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you can point to a 2.3 okay. document, but cool. you'll. Cool, thank you. And, and not only that, you can also point, like, the idea of VEX is when, once you have, like, once we start getting, like, VEX processors, you can compile all, that, all of that information to piece together the impact story, which may not necessarily come all from SPDX, it can come from the other formats as well. 